you are alive, you are youth, I said, praise the Lord. We're here because we want to arise and we're going to shine. And the glory of the Lord will be upon every life in Jesus' name. Father, I've come to your presence. We're going to experience your power, your lifting power that will raise us up. And in reality and in truth, everyone without exception, you give us the heart, the life, the spirit, the aspiration, the ambition to arise and to shine in Jesus' name. Whatever, whatever pins us down, keeps us down, whatever will make us to go back retired instead of advancing we pray lord this day here there everywhere crush them out of our lives and make us lord to have that lifting power that will make us arise shine in jesus name confirm your purpose of creation in every life Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You can sit down. We come as youth now. Who is a youth? When you go to the dictionary, the dictionary will give you an idea of years. You are youth because you are this old, you are that old, but there are people who are youth by that definition. But when you look at them, their lives, their movement, the ability and the agility and the activity of their lives, they don't act like youth. Who is a youth? Whatever your age, 13, 17, 25, 30, 37, 40, 41, 42, or even you are beyond, you are older than that. Who is a youth? Why? He that has a yearning spirit. When that yearning spirit dies, you are not a youth. But when you have something you yearn for, a goal you yearn for, an idea that is burning in your heart, something that you pursue, and you yearn with a yearning spirit, that's a youth. Oh, the one that is having an observant spirit, the old people, they don't observe anything. They don't have any objective. Life is over. They are waiting for the grave. But the youth is the one that has an observant spirit. He has an objective. She has an objective. I want to be. It is that desire. It is that wanting to be. It is that aspiration for ambition. That's what makes you a youth. Who is a youth? Somebody who has an uplifted look. It doesn't look down all the time. It doesn't look at the past. It doesn't look at, look at what I've done. What he did yesterday is too small for the life of today. He has an observant spirit, an uplifted spirit. His soul, his heart, his whole purpose of life is uplifted. I'm looking up. Whatever I've got, I'm looking forward. Whatever I've achieved, I'm looking up and I want to achieve. A youth is the one that has a teachable spirit. 
Everything I did yesterday, I did with the knowledge of yesterday. Everything I did in the past, I did with the knowledge of the past. I want to do something I've never done. I want to be somewhere I have never been. And I need to look at the people who have been there before me. Can you tell me? Can you teach me? Can you show me how that was done? I'm learning a new language. I'm following a, a, a new master. And I'm following something that will crown everything I've done in my life. And I need a teachable spirit and the teaching makes me a learner a youth is the one that has a teachable spirit so that I can be where God ordains me to be I think at the age of 13 I don't know everything yet at the age of 30 I don't know everything yet at the age of 40 I don't know any everything yet what makes me a youth at the age of uh, 50 and 57 and 60 and 63 I don't know anything yet especially especially if I have an upward look and I want to get to where I have never been that yearning and that objective and that uplifted soul will make me to know I need to learn something more than I learned in school. That teachable spirit makes me a youth. And it is when I have that, I'll be able to say, I am a youth. And then the youth has a hopeful spirit. Hopeful spirit. There are people that have lost hope in life. I could have done that when I was 22, but now I'm 42. They've lost hope. I could have done that when I could stay under a teacher in the school, but now to learn by myself, to study by myself, to have a goal, like the goal post on the football field, and then shoot towards that goal. Well, when I add a master, when I add a teacher, when I add a leader, when I add somebody who could control me to come to school, maybe I could have done that. But now I'm past the age of having a teacher, of having a leader. So no hope. When hope dies, youthfulness is gone. But when you have the yearning, the yearning to learn. When you have the observance and the objective that you are driving at, when you have an upward look and you're expecting an upward lift, when you have a teachable spirit and when you have a hopeful mind, hopeful heart, hopeful demeanor, that is a youth now. By that definition, do I have any youth in the house? What are you? You will go up. You will get up. No matter what happened in the past, what did not happen in the past, be a youth. Pastor, I really feel I don't have that yearning spirit, observant spirit, uplifted look. I really have, I really think I don't have uh, that teachable spirit, hopeful life. That's why you are here. Before we are through, in a few minutes, everything will turn around in your life. And whatever, whatever, whatever makes you like a dead log of wood, life will come. A creative work will be done in your heart and in your life. And everything you ever hope for, 
every sin you ever targeted, every sin you ever observed, he did that, she did that, can I? Everything you ever thought about, is that possible? Possibilities are coming upon your life today in Jesus' name. Hey, look at Isaiah chapter 60, and I'm reading from verse 1. Arise, shine, hold on. There are commandments that have promises of power inside them. This is one of them. Here is the word from God. Here is the word from Christ. Here is the word from our creator. Here is the one that knows us. He knew, our, he knows our past. He knows our present, but he knows our future will be greater than the past and the present. And he gives a command and the command comes with promise. Because he says arise, it's going to put the power to arise. It's actually giving you a commanded prophecy. It's a prophecy. It's a commandment. It is something he wants to do. It's something he's going to achieve in your life. And he says, arise. He wants to know whether you have the mind to obey the commandment. Don't worry about the power. Don't worry about the possibility. He all just wants to know whether you still have that youthful spirit and you are yearning and you are observant and you are objective and you are uplifted and you are teachable and you are hopeful and so he gives you the command when you make an effort to do that you will send in the power. Power in your life today in Jesus name. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. All you saw was darkness. All you are seeing around you is darkness. All you see around you is inability. All you see around you is impotence. All around, everything you see around you is so dark and yet the voice comes from heaven and it says, Arise, shine. I wonder, let's say somebody, for example, like me, my age. And then I say, gone were the good days. That I'm no more, if I could become a youth, what I would do, and the Lord says to me, arise, shine. And I say, Lord, how can I arise and shine? I am not youth anymore. He says, if I have yearning, and that's what I need to ask myself, whatever the age, whatever the gray ears I have on top there, am I still having any yearning? I said, yes, Lord. Am I observant? Have I observed? People of my present day, contemporaries, that are still running the race and are still doing invention and are still getting some purpose of life fulfilled. Am I observant? Do I have the uplifting Christ living in me? Am I teachable? Can I be taught? Look at all those artists, the violinists. And those who had the spoken word and look at that painter. Can I look at those young people and I say, I, I would have done that if I were young. It's no, not if I were young, but if I have a teachable spirit. I say, yes, I do. The books are there. Anything you want to be in life, anything you want to do in life, all the books are there and all the ideas are there there on the internet and then am I still hopeful once I have all those characteristics I am still a youth anybody a youth there I said anybody a youth there that's all that's all you will go places you have never gone you will do things you have never done you will arrive, you will arrive, you will arrive at a destination you never dreamt of in your life in Jesus' name. So, thy light is come. 
my light is calm my light is calm and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee where are you amen, amen. god does not make mediocres he makes masters you will not be a mediocre mediocrity will be flushed out of your life you will live a happy life, a successful life, a joyful life, an empowered life. The life of the one that the youth has had. I'm talking to you today on shining with all round excellence through Christ. Shining with all round excellence through Christ. And we divide the message to three parts. Number one, the gracious command with promise, the promise to shine. The gracious command. Now, God never commands anyone to do anything which he knows, which God knows he cannot do. He does not command a bird to swim. No. It's a wise God. It's a reasonable God. It's a resourceful God. It's a God that knows what he can build into us. And then we achieve. He does not command a fish to fly. Because he knows the fish and the bird, they do not have those abilities. If he talks to me, if he talks to you, and he says, arise, shine. It's a gracious command with the promise to shine. Number two, the glorious conversion and power to shine. The glorious conversion and the power to shine. It is a man, you might know him by the work of his son is Webster and he was sent to school and when he got to school the teachers teaching, teaching, teaching he didn't get anything eventually the teacher sent Daniel Webster back home and said this one cannot know, cannot study cannot learn anything so Webster was crying and got back home to the mother and why are you back the teacher said I'm not material for school even for primary school not to call secondary or college or university not to talk of becoming an author of the most acceptable dictionary of the English language. So the mother said, don't worry about that. That's what the teacher thought about you. I know you. I'm your mother. More than the teacher. And the mother began to home train, home teach, home school that child. And now he became what he became. No matter who has written you off, God is taking you up. And as a glorious conversion and the power to shine. Number three, the great commitment to the privilege of sons. You know, when we have a privilege, we need to commit ourselves to that privilege. Here is what God has decided is going to do with this single life, your single life. Here is what God has decided I'm going to do. And I give the command, and he brings the commitment to the world, arise and shine. Your light has now come. The glory of the Lord will be upon you. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes you're hearing a song, and when the song began, you were just like that. You were cool, well collected, and you were there. Nothing moved you. All of a sudden, there's only one line 
in that song, something inside you wakes up. Your attention is all there. And immediately you begin to sing. That's for me. That's for me. That's the birch that is going to arise and shine from me. Sometimes we're listening to a message. And we say things we have known, things we have heard before. And then all of a sudden, a sentence comes. That sentence is coming for you today. It will wake you up. It will make you to realize what? That's me, that's me, that's me. And I'm going to commit myself to that privilege of the sons of God. Look at number one. Number one, now we're looking at the gracious command with the promise to shine. In number one, now look at already we read Isaiah. Let's look at verse two there. In verse two it says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon you that's for me it's for you in Jesus name Look at three things here. Look at three things in this uh, gracious command. Number one, rise from the sin and the shame of the past. You know, if you are bogged down, I said that it was wrong. I did that it was wrong. I went there it was wrong. I ate that it was wrong. Are you going to spend your whole life regretting I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, yes, I shouldn't have. Are you going to spend the rest of your life just a kind of repeating all that you've done and regretting? Arise! Arise from the sins of the past and from the shame of the past. Number two, arise from the sickness and suffering at present here is the situation where you are and you are mourning and groaning over the sickness and the suffering and if you are tied down like that all your life are you going to arise and shine number three arise to shine and soar towards progress i didn't get an amen there arise to shine do you see you are rising the reason you are getting up, the reason you wake up in the morning, arise. The reason you go out of the house every morning, every day, arise. The reason you, uh, you know, think, what am I going to do today that will uh, contribute to the progress of my life? So that not one single day is wasted just like that the reason you are thinking of that is because you have a goal an ambition a place to reach and every day must contribute to what you will be in life arise to shine and soar towards progress let's look at number one there number one arise from the sins and shame of the past in Ephesians chapter 5 we're looking at verse 12 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 12 for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done by of them in secret well everyone can say that have I ever done something in a in my earlier years, I'm now ashamed of, yes. Have you ever done something that now, if you were to talk about in public, and you, you've done that before, and you're ashamed of that, yes. But then, the Lord doesn't want us to remain in the pool of shame and tears of what we did in the past. It says, I know all I've seen and come short of the glory of God. That's why I come to you to say, all right, get up from there. I'll wipe all your sins away. Give me a good amen. 
I'll take all your past shame away. Give me another. Amen. And today, you will have a clean slate. When the Lord has blotted out, wiped away all the sins and the shame of the past. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, he said, But all things are, that are reproved are made manifest by the light. The light of the gospel came to me. The light of the gospel has come to you. And that light of the gospel makes manifest. That's a sin, isn't it? That's shameful, isn't it? Will you want this sin and this shame to be recorded with you in the newspaper, in the media, for everybody to see? No, I will not want that. Will you want this to go into a permanent record in heaven so that all the angels can see this is who you are? And so that everyone on earth in, in uh, heaven will say that this is who you are? No, I don't want that. Okay, give that light to me. Give that slate to me. I'll wash off everything. That's what God wants to do. He wants to erase. He wants to blot out. He wants to wash off everything that's of sin and of shame in your past life. He tells us in this, uh, verse 13, but all things that are, uh, that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does make manifest his light. In verse 14, uh, he now tells us, there, wherefore he says, awake. Now, that sleep is, if we're sleeping with sin and sleeping with shame, uh, you know, something has happened. You really feel the bite of the conviction. You feel the shame of that action. And then what you say, I'll sleep. The sleep will take it away. No, from experience, when you wake up the following morning, the first thing that comes up in your heart is the guilt, the condemnation, the shame of what happened before. But now the Lord says, and arise from the dead. Arise from the dead. Again, it's a, a gracious command that the Lord has given us. He wants to forgive us. He says, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. Today, Christ will give you life salvation forgiveness freedom and a new power a gracious power a glorious power to be a person that now is free from condemnation is free from guilt and is free from every sin of the past that brought shame in your life today is your day I said today is your day but you know, uh, look at that verse. It says, arise, arise, arise. You take that step, that human step, that repentant step, that step of the penitent. And then when you've done that arising and throwing all those sins to your back and saying, Lord, I don't want the sins anymore. I don't want the shame anymore. I arise as you have commanded me. And then Christ, it says, and Christ will give you light. Darkness will vanish away. Shame will vanish away. And everything that made you droop, that he is just looking down as if there's no way forward, Christ now blotting away the sin and blotting away the shame and Christ shall give thee light. Look at number two there. Number two is arise from the sickness and suffering at present. There are times where this great goal and this great ambition but every time the door to the fulfilling of that ambition, the door will open, sickness comes. What am I talking about? You know, we go to school, we attend classes, we read our books, we do our homework, 
We do the planning for those of us who are planning on our job. And when the exam, that's the door that opens for you to go to the next step, the exam. When the interview, that's the door, that's the door that opens for you to go through and go to the next level every time that should happen. Sickness comes, some things we didn't plan for comes, and because of that, we're not able to succeed in that exam. We're not able to do what we ought to do, and the place, the height we need to get to, it's that sickness hindering us, the suffering hindering us, and the, and the strange event hindering us, that the Lord will take away from your life permanently. Amen. Arise! from the sickness and the suffering at the present time. We're looking at Luke, sorry, Acts chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 33. Acts chapter 9, verse 33. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. You know, sometimes you need to wonder. Somebody is sick and he's been sick for eight years. What goal could he pursue those eight years? That's the challenge. And what ambition can he effect? Those eight years, that's the problem. And what competition can he make? I have the same brain as that person. Sick people have brains. I have the goal that I want to achieve. Sick people have goals. The only challenge is the sickness. Keeping their bed those eight years will not allow them to follow any ambition, anything. They concentrate all their thoughts, all their finance, everything, all their activity on wanting to get rid of the sickness. If there's anything like that in your life, today has come to take that hindering sickness, suffering away from your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, and Peter said unto him, And yes, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise. A voice now came that will shatter every sickness in the body, all the suffering in the body, everything that will hinder him from any ambition? And yes, you have any ambition? Yes, I did many years ago. But eight years now, I have to abandon that because of this sickness. All I'm not seeing now is my sickness. No, that sickness will vanish. That sickness will go away. And you will nurse the ambition again. You will nurse the destiny, destination again. So Peter said, by the voice saturated with the Spirit of God. Arise and make thy bed. Look at something there. Peter did not actually touch him. Peter did not anoint him with oil. Peter did not make him drink any water. He was there and Peter was here. And the world... You are not surprised because even the shadow of Peter as he passes by, the people who are sick, he, everything about him, the apostle, he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That power so saturated him that a shadow coming upon the sick 
was healing them. The presence of the Lord will heal you. The power of the Lord will heal you. The cross of Christ who died for you and he bore all your stripes that will heal you. Whether you are touched or you are not touched, you are pushed or you are not pushed, hands are laid on you, hands are not laid on you. You are well today in Jesus' name. And he arose immediately. He arose immediately. Look at verse 35. In verse 35, and all that dwelt at Leda and Saron saw him and they turned to the Lord. You don't even need to wait until you have the personal miracle yourself. They did not have the sickness that made them lie down there helpless for eight years, but they saw the manifestation on another person and that got them into action and they turned to the Lord so that that same power of the Lord will turn everything around for the better in their lives. The same thing have you not heard, have you not seen what the Lord has done for other people and as you see what he has done for other people, maybe you are not sick like those people and they got their healing and they got their lifting up and they got their miracles. Seeing that that the God who can do that and make that man who had been sick and been reading for eight years make him instantaneously immediately whole that same God can wake up my brain that same God can wake up my life that is that same God can break every yoke in my life and they turned to the Lord. As you turn to the Lord, great things will happen in your life. Great ambitions will be effected in your life in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here is arise to shine and soar. Shine and soar. Uh, there are people that, you know, you can stay in the same place just like these bulbs of light. They stay in that place and they shine. You can be like that. You can shine in your locality. You can shine in your village. But then, like the eagle, you can arise and you can shine. Shine beyond your coast. Shine beyond your territory. Shine beyond where you are known at present. That your shine and your soar. And I pray for every one of you. You will shine beyond your locality. Any shade blocking your shining. And the shining is restricted to a locality. All that shade will be taken off. All that curtain will be taken off. You know, when, when the curtain surrounds you and you're shining inside the curtain, but in clothes, people outside, they can see there's a light shining inside that closure, enclosure. But who is it? When the power comes, you arise, you shine, and you soar. Nobody will have any doubt. That's you. I say that's you. You will soar in Jesus' name. Look at Isaiah chapter 52. I'm reading from verse 2. Shake thyself from the dust. You know, there are people that think that God will do everything. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But it will not breathe for you. You still have to do that yourself. Yes, you can do everything. But you still have to drink that water yourself. You still have to rise up and walk with your feet yourself. There are things God will do. And there are things he has given us to do. Brush the sleep out of your face. You can do that yourself. Get to the school, get to the class, get to the library, get to the office. You have to do that yourself. 
to separate yourself from the things that cluster your life, occupy your life, the things that almost bury you under heavy dust. You can shake that all by yourself. The people that do not read, they do not study, they do not go to work. They always give excuses. And they say, I'm a child of God. God will do everything for me. My brother, that's like a farmer saying, you know, I'm a child of God. I don't have to sow. I don't have to plant. God will bring the crops up without doing anything. He'll do it for me. That's not proper thinking. That's not scriptural thinking. There are things you need to do by yourself. Begin to ask yourself, yes, God has given me the form to arise and shine. And God has given me the know-how. He has given me the promise and the power. Arise and shine. What are the things I need to do by myself? Build your home. Do it yourself. Build the business, do it yourself. Shake yourself from all the things that clamp on you and makes you like a nobody. Shake off those things, do that by yourself. And God said, shake thyself from the doors. Arise and sit down. You'll have a better office to sit down in. You have a better position to sit down in. You have a better authority to sit down in. It says you shake yourself from the doors and you sit down. And you know where you sit down. Not with the mediocres. When you arise, when the Lord has brought his glory upon you, you will stand up and you will know, I want to sit down, where do I sit down? A child of the king, where do I sit down? A person that God has brought out of mediocrity, where do I sit? You don't just sit down anywhere where you come, into any place. And you look at where to sit down, the place is for children, kindergarten, boys and girls. They are put there so that they can pray, play and be shielded from the event that is going on. You don't go and sit down there. When you say this place is for high flyers, the people who are going to fly high, and they're going to be, and they're ambitious. They have aspiration, and they're achievers. Whether they're young achievers or old age achievers, you will know where to sit. And so God says, arise in your life from now on. As you arise, you shake yourself from the doors, and then you sit down in the appropriate place appropriate for the promise you claim, appropriate for the power that resides in you. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Because if you are bound in the neck, and you have that rope on your neck, and they treat you like a goat, they treat you like an animal, and you say, what, what can I do? You. They put a rope in my neck and they drag me. The way you treat yourself is the way they will treat you. The way you look at yourself is the way they will look at you. The things you submit to and the things you give yourself to as if they know I'm a village boy, I'm a village girl, and that's all I can be and all I can do. That's how they will treat you. The way you talk about yourself. I mean, nobody, that's how they will treat you. I go nowhere, that's the way they treat you. When you belittle yourself and you say, you know, saved by grace. Now, do I have mouth to talk? Do I have any heart to think? I need to get to that ambition. That's how the world will 
frustrate you. But when you lose yourself from the banks of your neck, captive daughter of Zion, you'll be free. I said you'll be free. You'll have to change your language though. You have to change your confession. You have to change your outlook. You might even have to change your dressing. I'm not talking of what a Christian dressing or, you know, worldly dressing. I'm just talking about, you know, you go for an interview. And if you're a man, you wear this short sleeve and, you know, you're trying to be humble. We don't demonstrate that kind of humility when we go for interview. The way you look, the way you dress, you're like an executive. It's like you've got that job already. And that's the way you position yourself and the way you speak your English with good grammar and then the way you also look and you look at the interviewer, you look at the people that are talking to you and if there's any question you don't understand, you lift up your head, you say, can I hear that sir? I need to understand very well before I can answer. The way you put yourself and the way you demonstrate that already you are up and you are not down, that's how those interviewers will take you. And from now, child of the king, you lose yourself. You're not going to be a captive anymore in Jesus' name. Look at, look at verse 3 there. In verse 3 it says, For thus says the Lord, Ye have sold yourselves, for not, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Christ, the Redeemer, comes and he gives us the redemption and he takes us out of that dungeon of captivity and he gives us the fulfillment of the promises he has given us that we are arising to shine and to soar. In Isaiah chapter 60, and I'm reading from verse 1, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine. Don't just arise. You must shine after arising. And you know, uh, sometimes when there are two parts of an activity, doing just one part will not achieve the purpose and the goal. You arise, that's not enough. I'm saved, that's not enough. I've come out of sin, that's not enough. I've arisen from all the shame of the past. Good, but that's not enough. Arise and follow up we shine. I will shine. I will shine. You will shine in Jesus' name. Then it says, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee look at those two words you arise in verse 1 and here in verse 2 the glory of the Lord arises upon you amen and his glory shall be seen upon thee you will shine. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it tells us, Thy son shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy mourning, of thy suffering, of thy sorrow, of the regretting shall be ended. No more regrets in your life. No more reversal of blessings in your life anymore in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, thy people also shall be all righteous. Your people 
and your self as you arise and you come into the light of the Lord and into the glory of the Lord it says you will be righteous and all your people will be righteous they shall inherit the land the goodness of the Lord forever the branch of my planting the work of my hands that I may be glorified your life your profession your achievement your ambition your success everything will glorify God in Jesus name and then in verse 22 in verse 22 a little one shall become a thousand a little one shall become a thousand sometimes we feel small and sometimes when we feel small we think small sometimes when we feel small we act small and you know your achievements cannot go beyond your acts, your actions. Because it's the sum total, the cumulative uh, result of your acting. I act, I act, I pro-act, and I positively act. It's all that sum together that brings achievement in our lives. And when we think of ourselves small, who am I? When we think ourselves little, who am I? Even though we hear people say the sky is the limit, we just know that that is a cliche. We don't really think like that. We're born again, we're saved, we're washed, we're cleansed, we're adopted into the family of God. And Christ lives on the inside of us, yet for all that, we think small about ourselves. And we see other people running ahead and achieving the goal that we have in mind. They are children of God. We are children of God. We say, that's them. I don't have their constitution. I don't have their brain. I don't have their ability. We think small and we remain small for today. I say today. You will not think small about yourself anymore in Jesus' name. You think, you think in line was the calling of God in line with the commandment of God in line with the commission of God in line with the promise and the power that works in you a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a stronger nation I the Lord will hasten it in his time the Lord is in a hurry to make you soar. The Lord is, is in a hurry to make you achieve that progress will soon come. My daughter there I said, your progress will soon come. My son there I said, your progress will soon come. I will see it, your progress, in my lifetime. Yeah. I'll see the upliftment of the Lord in my lifetime on your life, in your achievement, in your profession, that that progress will come, we'll all see and rejoice with you in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at the glorious conversion and power to shine. We've been in darkness, we've lived in darkness, we've acted in darkness, and now the Lord is saying, our light has come. 
and that we're going to soar, we're going to shine. And the shining is not going to be a local thing. It's going to go beyond your locality. That needs conversion now. Conversion, we look at conversion in one way generally. That person is a sinner. And he wants to become a child of God. He needs conversion. True, true, true. We need conversion. Sinners going to become a child of God. Conversion. But there's another area of conversion that many times we don't think about. I always think I'm unfortunate. Daddy and mommy did not treat me well. They didn't give me the gold. They didn't even encourage the gold. Everybody around me, this is what they have done. They have killed my aspiration. They have killed my vision. The things they do, they kill me. They reel me. You know, this flesh, this face you see, that's not the real me, the inner man. The one that is willing to jump, the one that is willing to arise, and the one that is willing to soar. I used to be like that until daddy and mommy spoke against that, until my seniors in the family spoke against that, until everybody was at me, and they just clamped me down. We need conversion from that state of fear and fearfulness and we need to fly you'll be converted give me a good amen you know the way they have I did something that's not good another thing that's not good enough I did another thing with all my efforts and with all my power and they condemned everything what do I do again okay everything is not good I hear you and so we relax. We take the back seat. Whatever I do, when I think of the best I can offer, this is what they are going to do, and this is what they are going to say. And so we sit back and we give up and we give in. We allow them to prophesy permanent failure in our lives. We need conversion. That the conversion that will make me forget everything they have said, everything they have done, and the blockages in the way that has not just come to the way, they come into my heart. And I even block myself. I cannot express myself. I cannot uh, be happy. I cannot be joyful. They put me there and they tell me, stay where we put you. I'm going to have total conversion. Say that for yourself. You don't believe that's the way you are talking. You don't believe you are going to have total conversion. Say it aloud. You know, if I told you what some great, great people, great achievers, what they have told me in the primary school, I remember in my standard four, 1954, I can see where we, was, where we were, and uh, you know the teacher, I still remember his name, said, why are you happy? Why are you joyful? You will never succeed in education. That's not your field, I remember. I can still remember in the secondary school, where are you from? A village boy wanting to compete with these people who are from the major cities of our land. I still remember. I remember in the university, uh, you know, a professor, actually head of department, he was unhappy with one decision I took. And he looked at me and he mentioned my name and said, this religion you are following will be wiped out in Nigeria. I said, sir, impossible. 
when you remember all that, if you see that one, think of what people say, what people do, how people act, you remain just like that. They'll be the prophets of your life. That you, are, you cannot go anywhere, achieve anything. But when you are converted, when all that word they said, they come under your feet. And there is total conversion. Total conversion. The fear is taken away. The timidity is taken away. The intimidation is taken away. The threats are all taken away. Conversion. A glorious conversion and power to shine. Look at your life. What are the words others have spoken? And you have internalized those words and the internalization of those words makes you to have what we call self-talk. And the self-talk is not building you up, it's tearing you down. Conversion, all those things are taken away today in Jesus' name. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Then in verse 17, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You'll be a new creature today. I know you are born again. I know you are saved, many of you, but all the same. There is, you know, the born again person that is still talking like he used to talk when he was still not born again. There are born again people that are still thinking and acting and planning on the basis of what they were. And they're not planning on the basis of what they are today. New creatures in Christ. And it says, therefore, if anyone a boy, a girl, a man, a woman, if anyone be in Christ by the virtue of the fact that he is in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Say amen now. Can I ask myself if the old ways of thinking and talking I'm planning if all those old things are passed away. Can I think about my own personal life? My father was a militant man, militant man. And I still remember him. And it's not what you want to do before him that you'll do. It's what he wants you to do. He'll compel you. He'll command you. He'll sit down there, even the look of his face will, rem will make you remember his personality. And I was clamped down. My principal, secondary school, he was quite a man. And that man, militant. And what he wanted, uh, you, you don't have to think it over, it's what he wanted that will happen. And then, my first pastor, when I came to the Lord, militant. And again, it's like you don't have a mind of your own. You don't have a plan of your own. You don't have any direction of your own. You don't have any decision of your own. And because daddy and principal and pastor, they were of the same mold, I learned to accept whatever people put on me. For me to have a life, an ambition, a goal, I know that this is what God wants of me. And for me to drive in that direction, uh -uh, daddy will not accept that. Principal will not accept that. And my first overseer will not accept that. But eventually I sat down. I said, look at all these promises of God for me. He wants me to rise. 
He wants me to shine. He wants me to soar. He wants me to do what the people, the authorities around me will not accept that I do. And so I have to go to God in prayer. This thing that brings so much fear and so much timidity and so much clamping down that I don't have a mind anymore to think, a mind anymore to act, a mind anymore to do. Lord, take it away. And although I've been converted many years before, but this is the conversion I'm talking about now, that the conversion takes place and the power to shine will come upon your life. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I said the power to rise, to shine, to soar will come upon your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at three things here. Three things here. Number one, true, com true converts shining in the midst of darkness. Number two is transformed creatures shining for Christ with devotion. Number three, triumphant concourse, shining till the, uh, till the eternal day. Look at number one. Number one, the converts shining in the midst of darkness. When we are converted, that's what he does. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5, it says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, your messengers, the one that brings the message of Christ, of salvation, of renewal, of total conversion, of triumphant life unto you for Jesus' sake. And then he tells us in verse 6, it says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, a shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He converts us. He changes us. It transforms us. It does a transforming work of grace in our hearts. And now he even enters into us. Behold, I stand at your door. And I knock. And as you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto you and sup and fellowship with you. He tells us in Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. Look at that. Jesus says in John chapter 9, I am the light of the world. And you know, Jesus, he wasn't timid in shining that light. Anywhere, everywhere he went, he said, as my father taught me even so i do the father made him the light of the world and he shone with that light and now he transfers that light to you and he says he are the light of the world a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid your life will not be hidden anymore in jesus name when we were very young, we used to hide behind any authority in our life. We're going out, and we're going out with that authority in our life. A father, a mother, a teacher, a principal, an authority. And as they are going, because we don't know what's in front, we stand behind them. And you don't even know. He may not know that we're there, but now he says, I've given you the power to shine. I've given you the power to soar. And in anything you set your hand 
upon he says you will prosper and therefore you come from behind of those authorities for ye are the light of the world a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid and then it tells us in verse 15 neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel what christ is saying is i've given you the light and understand i didn't give you the light to hide behind a bushel and to hide behind a strong personality i give you the light and i brought the glory into your life and i gave you the conversion so that you can shine not to stand behind an authority that wants to quench your light it says it giveth light unto all that are in the house then in verse 16 it says in verse 16 let your light so shine let it shine you can hinder it by fear you can hinder it by intimidation you can hinder it by belittling yourself you can in it says no all those hindrances whether coming from you or coming from people take all that away and let it shine let your light so shine before men that they may see i don't want to see i don't want people to see that i'm good but jesus said that they may see if i act differently now they will think i am showing forth i am strong i don't want people to see that i'm strong but that's what jesus said we should do if i do this and i have first class people will see that maybe i'm a clever student and i don't want people to uh, give me any credit i want to, to remain humble you mean remain humiliated that's not being humble when you go against what christ has ordained that you will do and he says let your light so shine that they may see your good work somebody calls you behind he says i just want to advise you the way you comport yourself see now you have backbone now you can stand now you can show forth the glory of god in your life you know people will misunderstand you they will think you are proud i'm not in control of their thinking i'm not in control of what they feel but i'm responsible to christ who says i shall let my light so shine and before men not behind men before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven amen amen, amen. people will see now if you make a first class people will see and if you don't want people to see it means that you will not use the extent of, of your brain everything you can do you will not do so that people will not think i am no from now on you will shine from now on the people will see which one which one is better to see that you are bad or to see that you are good to see that you are dumb, dummy, or to see that you are clever, which one is good? To see that you are in front of the crowd, or that you are always at the back, which one is better? To be so humiliated and <laughs> walking with your head bowed, and not wanting to see the world, or the world to see you, or to lift up your head, and to bring glory to God, and they will say, that is a child of God. Which one do you want? That you are of God? That you are shining? That you have made it, you will make it in Jesus' name. You know, somebody 
uh, was sitting by my side. I was quiet reading the material. And when you end up playing like that in the first class, you know, the people, they have liberty to talk and all that. And so he turned to me and he said, my friend, you understand language, I'm not his friend, I'm just, you know, talking. My friend, who are you? And I mentioned my name. He said, what do you do? Should I be ashamed to tell him? Because he is an accomplished engineer. I am what? A pastor. Not just a pastor, a pastor first grade. And so, I told him, I'm a pastor. He said, what church? I said, Deeper Life Bible Church. He said, ah, is that the church that has won Pastor Kumuyi as their leader? I said, yes. You know him? Have you met him before? Because I, I hear that that church is large, and before you can see him, I say, yes, I know him. And yes, I have seen him. Ah. And before he landed, I said, I am Pastor Kumu. The point I'm making is this. He stood up. And he said, everybody stop what you're doing. I want to tell you something. I want to bring you information we have today in the plane with us, Pastor Kumuyi of Deep Alive. My friend, should I bow my head, bury my head? I don't want to be known. Why not let your light so shine? That they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And he said, hold on. I could tell you his name. A great and popular rich man in our country. And he said, this man has helped my business my treasurer had been stealing money from our company millions and then my treasurer went to this man deeper life church and he said he got saved and he came back to our company and he told me about all the money he has stolen and he said since that time i say to that church Help me get people, especially those who will deal with my money from your church and let them come here. Should I be ashamed? No. And should you be ashamed when God himself makes your light to shine and the people see your good works and they glorify your father who is in heaven that's what you have to do from today you'll not publicize yourself you'll not blow your own trumpet but your light must keep on shining it will shine in jesus name that's why it says let your light your light not another person's light let your light so shine before men don't stay behind and hide yourself i don't want them to know i'm saved i don't want them to know i'm sanctified i don't want them to know that i believe in holiness i don't want them to know that i am a person that is dedicated to glorifying the lord let it shine let it shine let it so shine before men that they the people around you may see your good works and they glorify your father which is in heaven we're looking at number two here number two here is the transformed creature shining for christ with devotion your life is transformed 
your life is turned around from the inside your inner man your soul your spirit your intention everything within the grace of god comes upon you he saves you he sanctifies you he cleanses you he purifies you and you have become a transformed creature shining for christ with devotion you do it with devotion you do it with all your heart all your soul all your mind you do it with intention you do it with purpose and you say my light must shine you don't just leave it okay let it shine the grace of god is there the goodness of god is there let it shine no you make it shine with devotion with determination, with dedication, that anywhere you find yourself, that grace the Lord has given you, and that power the Lord has given you, you let it out with dedication, and with devotion, and you let it shine. Romans chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 1. In Romans chapter 12, we're looking at verse 1, it says, I beseech you, Therefore, brethren, and it says, by the mercies of God, that she present, you see, you have to do that. It is yourself that brings out the, the experience you have, the experience of salvation you have, the experience of sanctification you have, and the experience of the emotion in the holy ghost the baptism in the holy ghost what you have is you that will bring it out that she present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and then in verse 2 in verse 2 it says and be not conformed to this world be not conformed so this world. do not copy this world do not act like this world do not behave like this world. do not borrow the principle and the practices of this world it says but um, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god you're renewed from the inside. Your life is totally new. You're transformed. And anywhere you go, that transformation of heart and life will be visible practically to everyone that sees you. And you're no more conformed to this world. In Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 do all things at school do all things at work do all things at home do all things in church do all things everywhere you find yourself do all things without murmurings and disputing in verse 15 it says that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of god without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world among whom ye shine as lights and they will always be conscious of that light shines everything the sun shines everything and you standing for christ as a child of god son daughter of god you shine every time and even though it's a crooked world a corrupt world an upside down world a world undependable a world that has given itself to the ways of the evil one even though you're in the midst of them you shine as light in the world and in verse 16 in verse 16 holding forth the word of life by the way you live by the way you act by the things you are involved in by the people or the people whoever they are that you are involved with holding forth the watch of life that i the preacher the pastor that i 
the apostle, that I, the apostle Paul, may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. We're looking at number three there. Number three there, triumphant on cross, shining till the eternal day. Our shining is not just for a week. It's not just for a moment. It's not when we're just up, when we're down too, when we're discouraged. The sun keeps shining, rainy season, dry season, the sun keeps on shining when we're alive because of achievement. And when there is a slowing down in that achievement, we still keep on shining every time, every day, before all men until the eternal day. Matthew chapter 13 verse 43. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 43, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear. Let him hear. We have ears to hear. I have ears to hear. I have ears to hear. And it says, I shine now, I shine all the days of my life. And then when you come to the place of eternal glory, we'll shine forever and ever in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 12, we're looking at verse 3. In Daniel chapter 12, reading from verse 3, it says, And they that the wise shall shine, as the uh, brightness of the firmament and day that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Amen. We we'll shine on earth, we we'll shine in eternity. We we'll shine on earth personally as believers as the sons and the saints of God. And then when we get to heaven, not only are shining the stars, all the people that were brought to the Lord, and we brought them into righteousness and into holiness, and they get to heaven. And they all surround us, and they give us, and then the Lord gives us because of them, because of the people we want to the Lord, by our lives, by our ministry, by our preaching, by our counseling, by encouragement, because of them, we will shine forever and ever in Jesus' name. I know you will say it better, amen. Point number three now, point number three, the great commitment, the great commitment to the privilege of sons, the privilege of saints, the privilege of servants of God, the privilege of stewards of the mystery of the gospel. We have a great privilege, and this privilege to arise, and to shine, educationally shine, professionally shine, practical Christian life shine, a representative of the Lord to shine and then to soar and to do that steadfastly and consistently. What a great privilege. In Genesis chapter 28 verse 15, it says, and behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou shalt, thou goest, say amen to that. I will bring thee again into this land, and I will not leave thee for I, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. It says, he has spoken to us to arise, to shine, 
at what the glory of the Lord upon our lives. And he gives us the promise, the privilege, I will not leave you anywhere you go in fulfilling this goal and this calling of arising and of shining and of soaring for the glory of the Lord. He says, I will not leave you until I have done everything I spoke to you of. Our great commitment to the privilege of the sons of God. Three things. Number one, number one, the decisive commitment of yielding sons of God. Number two, the deliberate commitment of yearning seekers after God. Number three, the dependable commitment to your success by God. Look at number one there. Number one, the decisive commitment. How many times people make commitment? In a meeting like this, and then after one week, they are forgotten. After one week, they go back to square one. After one week, they go back to what they were before. There's no decisive commitment. But as we're going to have the demonstration, the manifestation of arising and shining, one thing we need is the decision and the commitment, the decisive commitment of yielding sons of God. Yielding. Look at Luke chapter 15, reading from verse 18. In Luke chapter 15, verse 18, I will arise and go to my father. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. He said, I will arise. That's a decision. But that decision you need to follow with action. Look at the next verse there in verse 19. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Verse 20, in verse 20, and uh, he arose. And he arose and came to his father. Intention is not enough. Decision is not enough. We must follow it with action. What do I need to adjust in my study life? What do I need to adjust in my friendship uh, life? What do I need to adjust in my professional life? What do I need to adjust before I can arise and shine? What do I need to adjust so that I can speed up and move on and get to the desired destination? I will arise. You have the intention. Now you must follow it up. And he arose. You might have to start with making a new timetable. You might have to start with uh, shedding off some bad friends and getting uh, getting with you good friends. You might have to shed off a particular habit. The habit that always puts you down. You say it, then you feel guilty. You do it, and you feel guilty. You might have to redress that, address that. That cannot be. I will arise. And then you must not find yourself in the old past anymore. And he arose. It's the decisive commitment of the sons, of the daughters, of the people that yield unto God. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter three, verse twenty-one. In Second Samuel chapter three, verse twenty-one, and Abner said unto David, "I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel unto my Lord the King, that." They may make a league with thee, and that thou 
may his reign over all thine heart desire it. Listen to this. And David said to Abner, and David said, Abner away. And he went in peace. He was to tell the people, you wanted to make David the king before. Now, arise and do it. And I'm saying to you, you wanted to succeed before. Arise and do it. You wanted to make progress before. And I say to you, arise and do it. You wanted to shine before. This is not the first time you are hearing about shining. You want to shine in your student life in your professional life, in everything you set your hand on, that everybody will know you are not into mediocrity. You want to master the game of your life and the gain of your life. Now, arise and do it. That's what the Lord is telling us. He's saying that intention turn into action. That decision turn into dedication. And that thought Turn it to reality. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Decisive commitment. You must start today. After this message, get a solitary place by yourself. What are the things I need to change? What are the things I need to modify? What are the things I need to accomplish? What are the things I'm aiming, I'm gunning at, I want to achieve? Decisive action now. Do it. Number two. Number two, the deliberate commitment of yearning seekers after God. Deliberate commitment. Anything you leave to chance will go with chance. Anything you leave to maybe probability will go with maybe probability. But when you are deliberate, this is the only one life I have. I want to live that life to the full. And I want to be, I want to be, I want to be what the Lord has purposed for my life. He told Paul, for this purpose, I make you a minister. I make you a professional. I make you an achiever. For this purpose, this is what is to be done by you. And so, you are deliberate. You are not following after the people. They don't have any goal. They don't have any ambition. They don't have any desire. They, they think, you know, what am I looking for again? I've got everything I want to get in life. You know, you are not following them. You know the plan of God for you. The purpose of God for you. And you know the things reserved for you that you will do do that no other person will do. And therefore you are deliberate and you are committed. And you have the yearning soul to get that done. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 15 it says the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. The knowledge I need, the know-how I need to get there to that destination. I'm deliberately finding out, and I'm using them as I find them out in verse 16. It says, a man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. If that's where you are going, I want to be among those great men, great in Christ great in the community and great in my country that's my goal i want i don't want to be a riffraff i don't want to be a uh, somebody that doesn't have any aim in life i don't want to be the with the never do well ones if you want to be brought to the great king to christ and you want to be brought to the great man in our world, it takes some gift to get there. You need to polish that gift. And you need to improve on that gift. And that will bring you to the place you ought to be in Jesus' name. And you have 
to be delivered. Success doesn't come accidentally. Success doesn't come just by chance. People talk about luck, luck, luck. There's no luck. It's when preparation meets opportunity. Then you sail through and you say the man is lucky. No. Preparation meets opportunity. You're looking with your eyes wide open and your legs are strong and your mind is focused and then opportunity, the door opens and then you are the first person to see that you enter in. That's what they call luck. It's preparation, meeting, opportunity. You're deliberate in preparing yourself. You're deliberate in wanting to have what you ought to have. The deliberate commitment of yearning souls, yearning seekers after God. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, says thou a man, diligent in his business, deliberate in his business, the business of academics, the business of workers, the business of runners, the business of athletes in life. You're an athlete and you're running a race and you want to get there and you're deliberately committed to making every part of your body strong enough to be able to go in the race. Yes, thou, a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. It is the people who are deliberate and they are diligent and they look at everything and they, you know, stop everywhere. Their success is leaking away and they stop every hole where the water of life is running away from them, from their lives. And they are so deliberately committed to seeing what they yearn for, to seeing it come to pass. Those are the people that you succeed, and today you come among the number in Jesus' name. I'll be one of them. I'll be one of them. <laughs> do, do you say you're one of them? Aren't you there yet? I told you, if I have yearning, if I have observation, if I have uplifted look, and if I have a teachable spirit, if I have a hopeful mind, hopeful soul, hopeful spirit, then I'll be healed. It doesn't matter, you're 70, you're 60, you're 29, you're 19, you're 13. Once you're young, once you're observant, and once you have an upward look, and once you're teachable, and you don't say teacher, that's enough. I can't take any, any other thing anymore. I have short span of learning. I'm not teachable beyond this uh, time. But if you're still yearning, observant, uplifted look, and you're teachable, and you're hopeful, life, better life will begin today. Number three now. Number three is a dependable commitment of your success by God. Dependable commitment. You are so committed, the Father in heaven depends on that commitment. Dependable. You are a dependable man, a dependable woman. You have a focus in life and your help at God in heaven uh, can depend on your commitment and consecration. That like once you say, Lord, I will. Lord, I will. Lord, I will. He knows your heart. He knows when you make up your mind. Now you want to succeed with his help. He'll grant you that help. Dependable commitment to your own success by God. Isaiah chapter 41. We're looking at verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41. Reading from verse 10. Fear thou not. You will not fear. 
for I am with thee. He is with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Amen. Amen. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, for I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. We can depend on that. Whatever we need for success in life, whatever we need for achievement in life, whatever we need for the aspiration he has planted in our heart. He has already said, fear not for finance, fear not for opportunities, fear not for open doors, fear not for the inner power to get that done. I will help you. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. We're reading from verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4. We're reading from verse 16. Let us therefore come, you and I, he and she, everyone. Don't feel tired. Don't run, don't run to the bathroom. Don't run anywhere. Let us therefore come. Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy that we may obtain mercy mercy for forgiveness that we may obtain mercy mercy for salvation mercy for success mercy for upliftment mercy for the help that he has promised us that we may obtain mercy and find find and find must look for it to find it you must search for it to find it we must desire it to find it we must ask of it to find it we must seek to find it that we may find grace to help in time of need we need the Lord Everybody needs the Lord. We need his help. We need his power. We need everything that he can do in our lives. And today, at the beginning of higher grounds in our lives, in Jesus' name. The beginning of shining. And the beginning of soaring. And the beginning of of succeeding at a new level in every heart in Jesus name he says now let us come not timidly not fearfully we're not frightened of God is our heavenly father our creator our redeemer let us come boldly to the throne not the throne of judgment it's not the throne of condemnation it's the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need your day has come for heavenly help your time has come for a new beginning of achievement in your life it will happen i said it will happen to who to who God has started the work already. Arise now in order to shine. Arise now. Arise now. Arise now in order to shine, in order to soar, in order to succeed. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord we've heard much. I want to take what we've learned and heard to the Lord in prayer. You must make up your mind. If the Lord 
that will help you. Everybody should be praying now. Nobody should go away now. Don't go out. We're having the prayer in two sessions. I'm calling on our pastor from Calabar to start with the prayer. And then uh, I'll come and take over. And everything you need to arise, shine, soar, succeed today, both of us are praying with you, you'll have in Jesus' name. Shall we rise and be converted? Hey! For we're here this day with your servants. We're here to receive a sea of prayer from him, from heaven. Father, use him this day to take us higher, higher, higher at the peak in Jesus' name. Thank and you. everybody said... Something is going to come upon your life. Something good, something great, something glorious. Here is Saul. Although he was tall, he didn't have the material for success. And the Lord had called him. The Lord has called you. He came to Samuel, and Samuel said, as you go, the spirit of God, of power, of authority will come upon you. Amen. He had never, he wasn't like, you know, a deeply spiritual man. And he said, as the spirit come upon you, you will prophesy. Amen. And I'm telling you, we're going to pray now. I stand representing Christ. His promise will be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. His power will activate in your heart. Yeah. And the promise of success, the promise of shining, the promise of soaring will be fulfilled in your life. You have prayed already. You have told the Lord your desire. I just come to seal it for you. Amen. That it will happen. Amen. Permit me. I need to tell you this. We were at a revival hour. We finished the prayer the preaching, everything. This man, a father, was standing in front. He came to the front with his child. And actually three of them. And when I saw them there, they caught my attention. So I stepped down and I said, brother, what's the matter? Who said, no problem. All I want you to do, shake my children. Oh, I said, that's good. I shook the first one. 
I shook the second one, and I shook the third one. Stretch out your hand so I can, I can shake it. And so he said, thank you, Pastor. Are you not going to say any? I'm, I'm through. I'm all right. I'll come back and give you the testimony. What had happened is that third boy had been sent away from school. He couldn't learn anything. He couldn't do anything. And the, and the teacher said, who was the principal, there's no point wasting the money of the father. This boy cannot make anything in life. And so they wrote a letter to the father, reaching up. And so the father came that Thursday without telling me about that letter and without telling me about the fact that this child is off. You are not off, you are in. And then after shaking hands, thank you, Pastor, I'll come back and tell you the testimony. And so he sent, the father sent that boy back to that same school. He said, there's no point. Don't waste your money. He said, it's my money. Do me this favor for this session or term. He said, okay. And that boy went to school. And at the end of the term, the result he brought back home, he was third in the class. The one he said could not do anything. And I'm telling you today, if I am here where I am now, and I was reaching up to you, and I came to this level, not only in preaching, I came to that level in mathematics that I got first class at University of Ibadan. If I came to this level, you are coming up to this level. <laughs> Keep up your hand. A miracle is happening in your life right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every brother, every sister, every son, every daughter. Oh Lord, take failure away from everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the inner power, the inner strength, the inner ability, and the excitement and expectation to arise Grant to everyone in Jesus' name to shine the promise of shining, the power for shining, and the prophecy of shining in life, in profession, in academics, in profession, the ability and the power to shine and to soar. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. This prophecy, arise and shine. This prophecy, the small one, the little one, shall become a thousand. This prophecy, that the small one will become a mighty, powerful nation. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. Your word will not fail. The wonder will not fall to the ground. Lord, make this brother, that brother, that sister, that sister, that son, that son, that daughter, that daughter, everyone, make them a success in Jesus' name. Do a creative miracle in every life. Sickness, vanish away. All depression, vanish away. All the closed door be opened before every one of you now in Jesus' name. Confirm it in everyone. Confirm it in everyone. Do it, Lord. 
and the world around each one will see you have made a success of every son, a success of every daughter. Thank you, Lord. It is done in Jesus' name. I am an achiever. I am a, an achiever. You know, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Anywhere I am, whether I'm preaching or I'm playing, <laughs> Pastor, do you play? Let me tell you. Or uh, at the IBTC, that's, um, you know, in Lagos. We're having a conference, I think, for the campus people. And one of our campus leaders had a daughter at that time that had a want uh, kind of, I think it was almost intending to deform at least the challenge in one leg. And I finished preaching. As I finished preaching, I was, uh, you know, going out of the hall. And that child with other children, they saw me and they, you know, got to me. But she couldn't run as fast because of the problem in the leg. So after, you know, placing my hand on their heads, what's your name, what's your name? And then I got to her and I said, what's your name? And she told me the name. And, you know, I said, you know, put hand on her shoulder or whatever. And I said, God bless you instantaneously. That's uh, something that I And just, um, I think it was uh, last year now, our campus uh, pastor, campus leader in Lagos, he brought, he came to me and he came and he told me this thing. He said, this, your daughter, that's his daughter, that was having this leg problem. You came out after preaching. You just placed hand on her and played with her. How are you? God bless you, your name. And instantaneous healing. And as I come to you now, and I look at you, I see that you are going to succeed. Anything in the day, anything in the dream that tries to block your way, I brush them out of the way. Success. Success. Shining. Go and do it.